Viewer discretion is advised. Sabina Lisnik had always been known for her intense performances, a promising name among up-and-coming actors in the theatrical worlds. But one night, as she took to the stage, something strange happened. She started seeing a great worm writhing in front of her, its slimy body wriggling as it towered over her. Just my imagination, she thought. But as days went on, the vision only grew stronger. One day, while she was rehearsing a monologue in her room, the vision returned, only this time ever more vivid. She couldn't ignore it any longer. The visions of the worm had been toying with her, flickering at the corner of her eyes, tormenting her. But now, the worm was looming over her. Then it began to sing. Lisnik felt weak, but at the same time, she was mesmerized by its song. She then pulled out a knife from out of nowhere and held it high up. For the hanged king. Hello, everybody. I'm the rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-7701. SCP-7701, also known as the Conqueror Worm, is a rundown, subterranean theater situated 184 feet underground in Moldova. It is there where SCP-7701 performance events take place about once a month. A performance event is composed of four stages. Stage 1, 9 to 48 SCP-7701-A instances manifest in SCP-7701's seating, each bound to their chair by iron chains. 7701-A instances are gray and androgynous humanoid entities, with a pair of cauterized stumps protruding between their shoulder blades. Their heads are enveloped by canvas sacks stained with an unknown aromatic black substance. These instances quietly convulse for the duration of the performance, moaning softly at random intervals. Stage 2 3 to 15 SCP 7701 B instances manifest off stage. 7701 B instances are humanoid entities dressed in clothing resembling Venetian masquerades. These instances move in a jerky, floppy, marionette-like manner. They speak with a mixture of Italian, Romanian, French, and vulgar Latin. Stage 3. 7701-B instances perform a theatrical production of a play that was written no later than the 17th century. A performance typically begins in a manner that is largely accurate to the original script, but diverge increasingly as it goes on. Stage 4. As the performance nears its conclusion, SCP-7701-C, a 50-feet worm-like creature composed of 80 to 120 flayed human bodies, emerges from beneath the stage to partake in the play's final scenes. This inevitably involves the violent consumption of all manifested 7701-B instances. Upon the performance's completion, 7701-C will move to the edge of the stage, bow, then crawl under it. All 7701-A instances will proceed to dissolve into black smoke over the course of roughly 22 hours. On January 7, 2007, 28 people in Moldova experienced sudden deaths between 2.25 and 3.49 p.m. Investigations suggest that no contact of any kind had taken place between all 28 individuals. However, it was determined that they all shared the following commonalities. They were professionally involved in at least one creative field, be it writing, painting, acting, singing, etc. They experienced one or more chronic psychological and or sleep disorders. They displayed uncharacteristic over-energetic behavior in the days leading up to the incident. 18 victims expired before medical attention could arrive. Five victims expired while in emergency care. Three victims were successfully resuscitated, but expired within the following 48 hours due to further complications. Only two victims of the anomalous incident were saved, musician Caleb Josen and actress Sabina Lisnik. Unfortunately, Josen was left in a vegetative state, resulting in Lisnik being the only source of any usable information related to the incident. Foundation agent Sturza was dispatched to investigate Lisnik's case. Sturza entered Lisnik's hospital room, where she was kept under observation. She lay motionless on the bed, her face as blank as the walls around her. How are you feeling today? Lisnik slowly turned her head towards Sturza. Like I've been stabbed. Who are you? My name is Dr. Sturza. I'm here to ask you a few questions, if you're feeling up to it. What sort of questions? 
Well, nothing you have to answer if you don't want to. Lisnik put on a blank smile. She chuckled <laughs> humorlessly and turned her head away from Sturza. Hmm. Okay, then. Sturza pulled up a chair and sat next to Lisnik's bed. How do you feel right now? Emotionally, I mean. I don't know. I feel hollow, I think. Like everything inside me has been scooped out with a ladle. Could be the pain medication talking, though. Guess I'm just tired. Do you know why you were dying three days ago? Yes, because it's what I do. What do you mean by that? It means what it means. Dying is what I do. Coming here to ask me questions is what you do. There's nothing else. We all have our roles to act out in this grand stage. Okay. Can you tell me how you were feeling in the days before you were dying? Normal, I suppose. I've been seeing things, though. What did you see? I saw my roommate sitting in our living room, weeping. She was really sobbing, with big fat tears rolling down her face, snot dribbling from her nose, her shoulders shaking like an earthquake. But she was completely silent. It seemed almost... mechanical. I didn't understand why until a week later, when her fiancé broke up with her. I saw her cry in the exact same way, the exact same tears. It was then when I realized she'd been practicing before, like a dress rehearsal. Have you seen anything that felt extra real? Yes. Can you tell me about it? No, it is not what I do. It is if you choose to. You don't understand, and that's okay. Helping you understand it is what I do. I'm listening. My doctor left his clipboard on the counter over there. Read it. Sturza got up and retrieved the clipboard, of which held a copy of Lisnik's medical files. The last page appeared to have been torn out. Sturza felt more and more disturbed as he read it, the report becoming less professional and more theatrical as it went on. Then, Sturza realized that it was a detailed transcript of Agent Sturza's day, starting from when he woke up that morning. What the hell? He shuddered as he reached the last page of the transcript. The last line read, Why does it end here? Did you do this? I am not part of the props department. Sturza scanned the documents again, flipping through it several times. Why does it end here? Lisnik remained silent, staring at him. A sense of dread started welling up inside Sturza. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, causing him to lose his footing. Why does the script end here? What do you need me to understand? The ground beneath them trembled violently, as if something was trying to break free from the earth. Without warning, a massive tentacle shot out from the ground and wrapped itself tightly around Lisnik's body. With this, our tribute, we pay in full. Wait, no! Sturza desperately tried to grab onto her hand, but it was no use. The tentacle was too strong. With this, our blood is the hanged king's. With a final gasp, Lisnik disappeared into the earth. Then suddenly, a worm erupted from the floor in an explosion of shattered ceramic and splintered wood. It writhed under the light, glistening and tumescent, its skinless faces a rictus of euphoric agony. Then it sang. Sturza drew his service pistol and aimed it at the worm, but he didn't fire. He couldn't. He winced and clutched his head with his other hand, seemingly in pain. What is the sound? As the worm continued to sing, Sturza fell to his knees. His gun clattered to the ground as he cradled his head. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a sound so, so, so divine. A new sky. I, I, I never knew. I never knew. He then curled into himself with his hands grasping his hair, not realizing that the worm was looming over him, its maw dripping with viscous fluid. Sturza finally noticed it, but he couldn't do anything. The mesmerizing song played in his head still. He was rendered powerless. No, this must be a bad dream, a nightmare. The marionettes made their appearance. They danced their way onto the stage with their jerky movements. The worm tore into Sturza as if it was all according to plan, a meticulously crafted theatrical move. Sounds of crushing bones and tearing of flesh reverberated through the room. Nay, it was a stage then. When it was finished, the worm rose from the overturned bed and turned to face its audience, chained to their seats and moaning incessantly. 
It bowed, then exited stage right. The curtain fell. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Have a favorite SCP you want to see on this channel? Leave us your suggestions in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more SCP content, then check out some of our other videos right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.